inner game contest. I mean, you know, enter as many game contests as you can. We're doing a game contest with the Academy of Interactive Arts and Science and GameStop. And the winners of that contest, a professional and professional, get $100,000. And the 15 teams that win are finalists are flown to dice, and they get to interview with all, you know, 15, you know, different publishers. So, I mean, you know, it, you know these are the ways the IGF is a wonderful contest, the, you know, Microsoft has a wonderful contests, Intel, you know, again, the commitment that you do to get together, and it's all about learning how to work in a team. It's, you know, this is not a, this is not an individual sport, and it, it has to be done in a team environment. So, you know, enter, learn. There are wonderful tools out there that are free to, to allow you to, to, you know, to make some great games. So obviously the, the industry is highly competitive right now and there are big challenges facing people trying to get into the industry. We'd love to hear from our panelists on things that they feel like people could have done in retrospect to, to be able to enter the industry, ways they could have better prepared themselves. I think we heard you know, a few great ideas, um, but are there any other, any other ideas that you have for this group of what people can do to prepare themselves to enter this highly competitive and challenging industry? Uh, well, I mean, I think we've covered a, a whole lot of, of aspects. I mean, um, work on your social skills. Uh, people, you, you know, you want to work on a team where you like people that you're going to sit next to every single day. So, I mean, be nice, uh, I think is actually uh, a really good point because you'd be surprised at how many people uh, try to break into the industry um, just because they think they're the best programmer ever but turns out they don't get along with anybody, so that's not really gonna work out. Um, uh, yeah, that's... So I, I definitely say also try to figure out the numbers part of the game, understand how much it costs to make a game, how long it takes to make a game, all these things that are really hard to get the answers to unless you, you, you try it and you really put numbers to it and uh, learn a little bit of the project management side of it. Uh, just starting a business as well as trying to make our first commercial games has been a super challenge. And um, luckily I had a little business background that if you don't, you, got, you should probably read a, a, a book on, on how to run a business or something, or consult with people, get a mentor, and that kind of thing. Risking sounding like a uh, broken record, um, we're hearing dedication, discipline, and those things that is really important. Another thing is uh, solid good education. When you are younger, um, going through institutions, that offers internship programs you can get through the door quite easily that way. A lot of our students um, who have, part, uh, as part of our undergraduate program, we have internships, and students basically work for free for this games company. And because it's relatively low risk for them, they are more willing to take risk on you. So they will hire you, and if you work a butt off and show that you can deliver, they will hire you afterwards. So most of our students, they're hired by games industry, went in that way. Um, that, that works out great. And I think I think also what we, we try to work with our students is, is to try to set their expectations appropriately. Uh, our art folks, um, you know, they come in and they say, well, I want to be a character artist, or I want to be an animator when I walk out of this program. And we say, well, you know, great, you want to be an animator. Make sure that when you go back to class, you look left and you look right and realize you're going to have to work 30 to 40 times harder than anybody in that room. Because to be hired when you get out of this program, you better have 20 full animation sequences that you know look like the next you know coming of whatever. Uh, you know the same thing with well, I want to be the character artist. Well, every studio I go into, uh, the character artist is 45, and he or she has a large office, and they're not moving anywhere. And when you start out, you get you don't draw you don't draw the monster. You get to draw the monster's toenails. So you know, I mean, you know, you just have to be realistic. You know what what you're trying to do. And every time you make a decision about the game industry, I only want to work on this type of game. You keep narrowing your your chances, and the and, and the deal is to get in. Once you get in, then they're welcome. People walking over the animation department are welcome over the program. You know, I have this idea. Can we talk about it? But the big thing is get in, and then start moving on because it's tough. That's an excellent point. Most of our, of our students who got into a games industry are developing tools in the beginning. So first year, you don't get to work on anything that's front end. You know, you look at some game, go like, yeah, in the background, I program this little thing that you can't even see. You gotta go through those stages. I, I think to add to that, it's also important to understand, like, 
where the markets are shifting within the games industry. So we'd love to do RPGs and first person shooters out in Chicago, but working on casual games is more affordable for us and it's faster. So we're doing that and you can do a lot of fun stuff with that and reach, uh, reach a lot of new market uh, and, and new gamers that way too. Uh, another thing, well, just something that matter. Uh, another thing too is if you are working on projects, try to do something different. I mean, that's that's what worked for us, right? You want something to shine out from your resume that the person interviewing you uh, has never seen before, um, and you know, polish it up, make it good, um, and it could be the next portal. You never know. All really great suggestions and pieces of feedback. The other thing I think for, as a as a corporation, we really, when we think about hiring people out of university, we're really very interested in people with prior experience that have worked on internships. So the more opportunities that you have to work in the industry um, on a, some type of internship program is ideal because we really like to see that progression of experience and that you truly understand um, the industry and what it takes to be successful. I would say we're probably of the, of the folks that we hire um, out of college, I'm guessing probably about 90% of them have gone um, through internships with um, either ourselves or competitors. So this is probably more geared towards uh, Kelvin and Juan, but certainly would like you guys to jump in from your past academic experience. How do you choose what platform your students will use for your classes, whether it be iPhone, Wii, PlayStation, or Xbox? I guess I'll go first, um, and then I'll be very honest. We really don't care. <laughs> in undergraduate education, technology and skills are just, if you go back and look at your physics books from high school or from uh, uh, Physics 101, that book is 500 years old. They update some of the figures in there, but then everything in there was invented 500, people discovered those 500 years old. And in university, you do not want to learn technology. You want to learn concept, and that's how we do. So if you know how to program Xbox, you understand the Xbox architecture, you understand how to program games, um, uh, 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 the uh, graphics card, you can program on any device. Um, the devices like handhelds, different, so we will learn about optimization, we'll learn about resource management. Once you know how to program on a cell phone, any portable device you can program. So in university, do not learn technology, do not learn skill, learn concept. So my, my short answer is we really don't care. In, in my classes, we use Xbox, we use Wii. Um, that's because we can get our hands on them. Um, we, we started in 2003, and we tried to emulate what goes on at a video game studio. The only reason you'd want to go to our program would be work for an entertainment video game company. Some of our students do go on to educational games. Some of our students go on to make iPhone games, casual games. But our program is set up for the major entertainment industry. Um, so 2D game, you do a mod, last six months you do a full-fledged game. Our teams are very, very large. We don't do the four-person teams. Our teams are 15 members. We try to, again, emulate what happens when you get out in the industry. And, you know, it's so, we believe that at the speed and what happens at the industry, so uh, we get uh, you know a lot of a lot of push to, to do the major engines, the unreals, the half lives, the you know what the what the industry is using. Uh, we you know everything we do everything on a PC. We would love for Microsoft to send us several you know Xbox development kits tomorrow. And I'll put that order in. But, but um, you know it, it, we, it, you know it's it's. Um, um, we're looking at Unity. We use you know, Garage Games uh, program. We use everybody's program for different parts of it. And one of the things is that our program is a master's program. You have to do a thesis or a focus group study. And a lot of folks, you know, our programmers build two two engines and their own engines, and they build one physics engine as well in our program. So um, we try to again follow what's happening in the, in the industry. Um, we, the quick, and to your point, uh, the quick turnaround production type things, our students do that more as an experiment than actually, and, and, and nothing, I'm sorry, uh, they, they, <laughs> sorry. They, they do it more, we have only one month off in the summer, and during that time they do some quick turnaround things, so they, they work on iPhone things and different things like that, but on the side, part of the 